this isn't acting. I'm legit pissed that I have to re-record this video because I went through it the first time. I didn't have the audio on. So not only did the movie waste two hours of my time, I have to once again talk about it because I'm an idiot. The Woman in the Window is a Netflix exclusive. And you know what that means? It's terrible. What's more insulting is we have like three Academy Award winners in this. Amy Adams, Gary Oldman, I, I assume he's won, he, he's, he's a legend, and Julianne Moore. Wh who, who do you owe money to? I actually knew we were in trouble before I fired up the movie because for this one, Amy Adams introduces it. If you hover over the little, you know, the little title box, it comes up and Amy Adams is like, hi. I'm Amy Adams. And, and you can kind of see out of the corner of her eye the reflection of a gun from a Netflix exec off camera. She looks miserable. Just watch it. it, she looks terrible. And I have to point out, Amy Adams is a national treasure, but she's one that has a chameleon of sorts. Sometimes starring in incredible movies where she gives powerful performances, and at other times you'll find her in a film that ends up at the bottom bin of a Walmart after two months. The same can be said for her looks. Often she comes off as a radiant beauty, who's clearly out of my league, and at others she's one Doritos chip away from being full on diabetic. Here, we get the worst of both worlds. Maybe her character is supposed to look like shit because she's agoraphobic, which means she doesn't leave her apartment to go outside because the real world's scary. Or maybe it's because the writer and director is a complete hack. We won't say their names, they don't deserve to work again in Hollywood. Whatever the reason, there's very little to look at and actually enjoy. The movie thinks it's artsy, which is a dangerous game to play. So we get creative camera work, such as a weird horizontal phone type view that tilters back and forth like it was filmed for Quibi. Remember Quibi? That was a success. She lives in a massive place. The thing's like four stories, tons of stairs. Reminded me of the David Fincher film Panic Room, which is really good. I often find myself thinking of better movies when I watch these bad ones. T it takes me to a happy place. But uh, th this movie lacks any of the coolness of David Fincher, any of the creativity of Panic Room, and really the whole thing's just ugly. From top to bottom, ugly. So shut up, Adam, what's the plot? Well, the plot is, you piece of shit, there's a lady who lives in a place, she's divorced, she's depressed, she pops a lot of pills, she pairs it with a fine wine, passes out for long periods of time, wakes up and spies on the neighbors. It's rear view mirror, it's Disturbia, it's the Burbs. It's that episode of The Simpsons where Bart's stuck in his room for the summer spying out a telescope. Only, it's not fun, it's not thrilling, it's not disturbing, it's just bad. I have this special sixth sense when it comes to terrible movies and knowing what the plot is right away. Like as soon as I see a certain character, I'm like, oh, that's the bad guy. Incredibly obvious. Here it was very predictable too. I wish I had that sixth sense before I started the film up. <laughs> which, which really shouldn't even be a sense at all because again, once I see it's a Netflix film, I should immediately know to avoid it at all costs. But Netflix has this clever way of tricking you, right? It puts it on the trending list. It throws out big name celebrities with A star power or their, their, their pretend awards under their names. So you're like, how bad can it be if you have three of these people in it? It's gotta be great. And then you find out each of them's in there for like three minutes and they just have some contractual obligation to just show their face for a little bit and that's it. We have a couple of those here too. Anthony Mackie's in it for maybe 20 seconds. You have the new Captain America from the Disney Plus show as the basement dwelling renter. I felt bad for him for being in this. I mean, I felt bad for everyone, but at least they can like move on with their lives. This actor's still pretty fresh. He's still starting out. So I just hope it doesn't really taint his, his image at all. Let me quickly talk about the good things in the movie. Wow, that was fast. Now let's head to the bad. Artsy garbage cinematography. Zero tension. A slow plodding journey to nowhere. An unsatisfying ending. Almost nothing happening for the majority of the film. Amy Adams looking miserable. A somber lulling tone that would put even the most excited person to sleep. And finally, me questioning why I even have a Netflix subscription at this point. Well, there you have it, the woman in the window. And if you were on the ledge about whether or not to watch it, just jump instead. Hey, congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. If you're not a subscriber yet, I highly encourage you to be. I mean, you made it this far, why not go all the way? Hey, let's go nuts! Hit the like button if you had some fun here. There's plenty more to come, so I suggest sticking around. 
Let's, let's see how see how crazy things get. <laughs> Big laugh. 